Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about symmetry, both a reflectional symmetry and a rotational symmetry. So how can I identify line and rotational symmetry is our essential question. So first off, what is line symmetry? It's basically a line where you can fold or flip the image and have both sides match exactly. So you flip it over or you fold it over and it's congruent on both sides. This is also called reflectional symmetry, hence why if you reflect it over a line, it's going to be the same thing. So reflectional or just reflection symmetry, those are both okay. So the line that we actually reflect over or flip over or fold over is going to be called the line of reflection. So the line of reflection, So which we've already reflected images. So this should not be coming as a shocker. So in this case, we have a lovely arrow, which is called a chevron. If I cut this somewhere, where will it be symmetrical? So if I cut or draw a line right here, this top half could fold over perfectly onto this one. So if this was a piece of paper, I could fold it onto each other perfectly. And that would be the line of reflection. So in your, uh, homework, you'll be drawing lines of symmetry. There could be more than one. There could be two, three, four, depending on the image. So in this case, we have a non-equilateral triangle. It's just isosceles. If this was an equilateral triangle, there would be three lines of symmetry. But since it's isosceles, I can only draw a line of symmetry right here. So I believe on Alex, when you do this, you're just going to click and drag a line that goes over that. And that would be my one line of symmetry. In this next one, I have an H or a sideways I, if you want to think of it. I could cut it right here down the middle, and it would fold over perfectly. So everything here would match over here. The thing on the line stays on the line, and then those would match each other. Now, if one of them was longer down here than the other one, it would not work that way. There is also another way, a vertical way, which you can cut it. So I can flip this side all over this line, and it matches perfectly. Just like a reflection, the distance between this is three, this is three, so all of these are three far apart here on these, therefore it could flip perfectly over. So what I would like you to do is try these next two on your own, pause it, I will have an answer shortly. So you should have both of these lines for it. You can cut it here or cut it here. Those are the only ways you can do those. By the way, if there was no reflectional symmetry, you would just say none. There is no reflectional symmetry. Now we're going to talk about rotational symmetry. Unlike reflectional symmetry or just uh, that line symmetry that is based off of reflections, rotational symmetry is when you rotate the object, it looks like it's the same object. So if there is some center point, so we're going to put center. So let me undo that center and then point. So center point around which the object is turned and looks the same. It'll be the same. Um, then we would say it has rotational symmetry. And what you want to do is just say, well, if you rotate it 360, um, that would be the same no matter what. So we're not talking about 360 degrees. We have to have a something less than 360, which the next one will be 180. So if I look at this star, I can put a dot in the middle and I could rotate this this far to put this point onto this one, and it would look exactly the same. So what I can do is I can rotate from this star point, kind of going around right there, and it would be the same thing. I could keep rotating it all the way around, just like that to each of these points, and it would look all the same no matter where it was, unless it was somehow different, which in this case, that's all the same. So therefore, I could rotate it or turn it. If you notice, I could turn it one, two, three, four, five times to be and see how many times it could rotate. So we could turn once, twice, three times, four times, or five times to get back to the same object or make it look the same. So in this case, we would say that, yes, this does have rotational symmetry. And how to find the magnitude so to find the magnitude is we're going to take every circle is 360 degrees and how many spins can we do or turns. So we're going to 
do five turns as we counted. We had one turn, two turns, three, and four, and then back to itself is five turns. So therefore, we can divide by five, which will give us a 72 degree magnitude for this. So that's what the magnitude is, and yes is the answer for rotational symmetry. So let's go ahead and check your understanding. I would like you to try these next three on your own. Pause it. I will have an answer shortly. So if you look here, this first one is a square, which if you turn it 90 degrees, um, we can get the same object. So we could turn it four times because there's four kind of corners that are the same. Hence, 360 divided by 4 is 90. That's the magnitude. And yes, it can turn. Also, a regular octagon can be turned eight times. So yes, it's rotational. And then divide by 8 to get 45 degrees. But in this case, no matter where I turn it, it's not going to be the same. I could keep turning this all the way back to 360. And then finally, it's back to itself. But we'd have to have at least 180 degrees, or sorry, no more than 180 degrees for that turn. So like I said before, the 360 does not work. We're not looking for a 360 because that will always be the same for everything. So it has to be something that's 180 or less for those spins.